Oh, the Bilam in a shaitani rajim. Bismillah, rock man, a rahim. Alhamdulillah, rabbillah, lameen. A rock man, a rahim. Maliki, a mudim. Iyaka, no, budu, ayaka, nastahi. Eden, on sarat, al mustakim. Surat al-Ladin al-Amti alayhim Gayu muktubi alayhim wala dhali I seek refuge to Allah from the accursed Satan, the rejected enemy. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful. All praise is due to Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, Master of the Day of Judgment. You do we worship, and your aid do we seek. Guide us on the straight way, the way of those whom thou hast bestowed favor, not the way of those whom thy wrath has brought down, nor those who go astray. I mean, you may be seated. In the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful, the one God to whom praise is due forever. We thank Almighty God, Allah, for his prophets and his messengers. We thank him for Moses in the Old Testament. We thank him for Jesus in the gospel. We thank him for Muhammad ibn Abdullah and the Holy Quran. Peace be upon these worthy servants of Almighty God, Allah. As a student of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, we would be remiss in our duty not to thank Almighty God for his divine intervention in the affairs of black people and all the human family here in America. I would like to greet everyone with the greeting words of peace. We say it in Arabic, Assalamu alaikum. And at this time, without any delay, I want to present the international representative of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, Minister Abdul Akbar Muhammad. Let's bring him on with a hand. Bismillah rahman rahim In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, I bear witness there is no God but Allah, and I bear witness that Muhammad is the Messenger of God. I greet you in peace. Assalamu alaikum. Um, First and foremost, I'd like to thank Allah for blessing me to be here uh, this morning. First and foremost, I'd like to thank Allah. The, are the mics on back there? Can, can we uh, do something with it? Uh, thank you. OK. First, I'd like to thank Allah for blessing me to be here this morning. Can you hear me all right? I'm using my natural voice now. And um, I want to thank the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. We just had an excellent meeting, so we're running. Uh, we did open the prayer on time, but he met with Minister Donald, myself, Brother Anthony Shaheed, and Minister Ralph. And the discussion was going so good this morning, we had to stop and break it off. But he's very happy to be here in St. Louis, and we're happy to have you. And we have a couple of logistical problems that I'm going to try to resolve before we get uh, started uh, in my welcome. Uh, some of the uh, brothers um, in the uh, nation, we have some uh, people, not that they are more important, but sometimes it's difficult to get them to the mosque. And we're going to ask some of the brothers to uh, give up some of their seats and uh, some of the juniors. And I hope that you would understand that and we'll find some room for you because we do have some uh, people coming that we want them to be a part of the ceremony. The city gave a proclamation for this day uh, with the office of uh, Sam Moore and, the, um, and Greg Carter. Thank you very much and we want to make sure that takes place. Uh, also, uh, Minister Donald will be recognizing all of the guests when he comes up. But this is a great day in St. Louis. It has a long history of our struggle in St. Louis. But in my remarks, there's one person that I want to uh, recognize, and the person who helped make this possible. 
First, uh, there's a routing. You know, I work overseas. And uh, when you introduce people and they make things happen for you, you always give them the proper recognition. This is only right. And um, I was feeling sick one day, and uh, Brother Anthony Shaheed said, I got a doctor you can go to right now. And you know how Anthony Shaheed is. <laughs> Being that uh, he came up under me when he was 17, he had this, uh, we can get it done. So he took me to a doctor's office, Dr. Jawad Siddiqui. And uh, I stood at the desk, you know, showing my diplomatic skills. And Anthony Shaheed said, come on, open the door. And we walked in the back. And he said, Doc, I need to see you. I want you to look at Brother Akbar. And um, Dr. Siddiqui became my doctor here in St. Louis, being that I have a uh, few places that I stay at and live at. But in St. Louis, he became my heart doctor. And he looked after me. And we cultivated a relationship. And uh, he is uh, not only a doctor, but he writes. He's concerned with health. Then in walked Brother Talib. Talib uh, got close to uh, Dr. Siddiqui. And uh, when we were wrestling to get this mosque, Dr. Siddiqui came in and said, I'll help you all get the mosque. So he's here today, and I want to give him a special <laughs> recognition. And uh, I want to thank uh, Brother Tollop. Brother Tollop, stand up, please. Tollop, who kept that relationship going. And uh, Brother Tollop, I want to say we thank you because when we started, you stayed in the streets. You went out and got people to give donations. And may Allah bless you. Your reward is with your Lord. And uh, remember that. You know, people may not say nothing. But you don't do it for people, you do it for God. And God is where the blessing is that Dr. Siddiqui didn't do it just because of some people. Dr. Siddiqui knew that in his heart that Allah would bless him if he make an effort to help with the spread of Islam in the St. Louis area. Now I'm going to uh, be brief because the minister wants to come on at a certain time. And uh, to our guests, we want to thank you. Now this is a small auditorium, but I want to say to Minister Donald, this is the way we want it packed every Sunday, and it's not going to happen in a vacuum. Let me say this before I sit down and uh, bring on our next speaker, because um, Brother Minister Donald can't say this for himself. But I want to thank Brother Minister Donald. He's been through a lot to make this happen. And uh, all praise is due to Allah. I want to say to his staff, that is uh, Brother Captain John, uh, Sister uh, Captain Dietrich, um, Brother Secretary Reginald, uh, Brother Edwin, and all of the staff that worked under them, we want to thank you very much. I know it's been a lot of dynamics and a lot of hard work, but I want to thank the painters and the brothers who came in and volunteered their time, uh, Brother uh, Jihad and the other brothers who just stepped up to the plate and made things happen. We may not be able to recognize you as individuals, but we know you worked hard to make this day possible. And most of all, I want to thank the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, because when we called him and asked Brother Minister Farrakhan if he would come to St. Louis to dedicate the mosque, immediately he said, I will come, brother. He didn't hesitate, he didn't say, I'll think about it. He said, I will come. So we want to thank Brother Minister Louis Farrakhan. <clears throat> Now, the mosque has a long history, and you know my forte is, is history, but there are two uh, members who started with us, uh, and I want them to come up. It's a husband and wife team. They have worked hard. They've been steady. They have struggled a lot. Um, there are two uh, beautiful children, three beautiful children, uh, who have grown up in the nation, the daughter uh, in California, and. Uh, Brother Kareem finishing college, working between Los Angeles. The day they were born, I was right with them through the whole process. Now I told Kareem this morning he's 24 years old. But this has been an upward struggle, so I want to bring them up now to talk about the history just for a few minutes, because the minister's on his way and we want to get him right on the uh, program. Brother Minister Ralph and Sister Pamela Muhammad, would you please come up?
Assalamu alaikum. In the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful, I bear witness that there is no God but Allah. And I bear witness that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is his anointed Christ. And that the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan Muhammad is our divine representative today, our champion. We thank Allah for them for giving to us this supreme lifestyle. It is the way we were born. So before I start preaching it, Brother Donald said, I'm going to give way to my husband, Brother Donald. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum. Well, my beautiful wife has gave, given a greeting, so we'll just go from there. And we thank Allah for family, which is critical in all that we do. And we thank Allah for so much. And every day, as the brother said, we must be thankful to all that we have, just to be able to get up every morning and to bear witness that there is no God but Allah. And we say who appeared in the person of Master Farah Muhammad. So very quickly, brothers and sisters, you know, um, how we started, how we got to this point. 1977, but Akbar's basement in Brentwood. We moved and I was thinking today, I said, well, we left there and tried to have some public meetings and we were downtown SIU, downtown, for, a couple, for about a week and they put us out. <laughs> and then we had to find another place. So we went to Mary Brown Center, which is in East St. Louis on South 15th Street, which was uh, named by uh, the late Representative, State Representative Wybetta Young, who named the building after a lady in the community. And the building still stands today. We met there every Sunday. You know, we had to pay $50. Sometimes they forgot to let us in, so we had to figure out the best way to get in, but we figured it out. <laughs> we, we didn't tell about Akbar how we got in, but we just got in. <laughs> All praise is due to Allah. And from that point, Brother Eddie Aziz, who's not here today, I don't see him in the audience. He's a state representative from Waukegan now. He was the first captain in, in the rebuilding of the nation of Islam. Excellent brother. And we saw the same building the same day, ironically. It, was, uh, it used to be a funeral home such as this. And it was a, community, it was, um, a health clinic after it became a funeral home. So when we saw the building, we, uh, we saw it, we looked at it. Uh, it was up for taxes. So we went to the county, we found out what it would cost us. We bid it on the building. You know, we got it for a low price at first, except somebody decided to keep bidding. You know how they do you, right? So we, got, we thought two grand was a good price. But the, you know, we ended up getting for 14 grand, which was a good price, because the building is 11,000 square feet of space. So we worked it, and we kept meeting at the Mary Brown Center. Eventually, Minister Farrakhan told Bad Akbar, we must open it up as a mosque. So just like you saw the brothers working around here these, these last few days, we started and we went to work. Volunteers. Carpenters, plumbers, brother uh, Robert Ringo, who's now uh, Shahid Muslim, was the carpet man back in those days. I wish he was here. He's back there smiling. You know I'm right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> but he could lay some carpet. Mm -hmm. And that's how we did. Brother Akbar sewed the uh, awning. You know, we didn't have the money, so we just made the awning. And a brother printed the sign, Muhammad Mosque, number 28B. And the rest is history. We grew and we grew. Allah blessed us. Then in 1993, it was time to take St. Louis back, building-wise. Our president was already here, but now it's time to come home. So we came home. We started out in the um, uh, Roberts Building, which they call the Sears Building, I think. Stayed there for about, what, 10, 15, about 17 years almost. Then Allah blessed us to be where you are today. So it's truly a blessing. So as they say, as we say now, we have mosques on both sides. You always got to look east before you look west. Because that's only natural, it's the original building, right? And we stand strong in a community that needs us like a community needs you. You know, the east side is 99.9% .9 black. We have more issues than you probably have because you have more resources and more people, but we stand resolved. Islam, that's the name of the game. So let's go to work. May Allah bless us to all be successful. Let's continue to raise up the flag of Islam in the hearts of our people and in our hearts so we continue with the struggle Right of the resurrection of the dead. May Allah bless you. We love you. Assalamu alaikum.
Thank you. Let's give Brother Ralph and Sister Pam another warm round of applause. Now, I know that Brother Ralph had a lot more to say, but um, he, okay. We have a gold Jaguar outside, and the, and the uh, I don't even have to say the license plate number, because I don't, how many gold Jaguars are in here, okay? <laughs> I, I know you got a Jaguar, but they're still going to tow it if you don't move it, okay? <laughs> so, now, we, wanna, we got about uh, 12 to 14 minutes, so we're going to have to move this program very quickly. But next, I want to bring up a sister who sung for us. And I know this is a mosque meeting, and those who uh, say, Astaghfirullah, they're singing in the mosque. But this is our lecture hall. Our masala is down the hall, okay? So in the lecture hall, we can do cultural things and have singing, okay? So when you write it, you say, you know, these are some strange Muslims. We have a place for prayer and a place for lectures. And in America, you need that in order to redeem our people. So uh, I want to bring up uh, Sister Dolores. She wrote a song. She sung it for us the other night, and you'll see it on the program. Is Sister Dolores here? Let's bring her up with a warm round of applause, Sister Dolores. dedicated to the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, the honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Um, and Master Farrar Muhammad. They lay down their lives for us. 
We love you, wonderful Trinity. We love. Why did they do it? They loved us first. Like the others, God ordained. Thank you. Thank you. Now, before I bring on uh, Minister Donald, I want to just cover, we have a lot of special guests. I'm going to start with this first row. Uh, and uh, I don't know all of the guests, so I probably need to have Minister Donald, being I've been in and out of St. Louis, but I see people who I know, or Anthony Shaheed. But I want to recognize uh, some people before, and then Donald will continue it. Um, and we, before Minister Donald comes up, we're going to take a public collection, and you know we need the money. So, um, but I first want to recognize Mike McMillan, our alderman. Please stand up, Mike, so we can uh, thank you very much. I want to recognize uh, Sam Moore. Uh, Sam, what is your aldermanic district in the city? The uh, fourth ward where all our African American history is. Okay, the fourth ward, <laughs> Sam Moore. I want to recognize Alderman Carter. Please stand. This is his district. And um, we're happy to be in your district, and we hope we can be an asset to your district, OK? And then next to him is Brother Minister Anthony uh, from Memphis, Tennessee. And uh, next to him is a longtime follower of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and uh, a soldier in uh, St. Louis. And, uh, and when you look at him, Allah has preserved him. He looks so good. Sultan Muhammad, please stand up. Sultan Muhammad, OK? Uh, behind him is Brother Norman from Detroit. Uh, please stand, Brother Norman. Brother, uh, thank you very much. Longtime follower of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, still looking preserved. Next to him is another Wahid, we call him. He was the first to say, Brother Minister, whatever it is, I'm with you. So please stand, Brother Wahid. <laughs> Brother Melvy. Yeah, yes. Please, Shahid. Okay, Melvy Shahid, thank you. And then Dr. Siddiqui, you met, and brother, this is Dr. Siddiqui. Brother Talib sitting next to him. My brothers, y'all have to forgive me. Zaki on the first row. Zaki, a longtime supporter and helper. Um, next to Zaki. Okay, is she in here? Yes. Okay, Darlene Green, are you here? Darlene and her husband, Darlene. Is your husband here? Her husband is on the wall. Thank you very much for honoring us with your presence, the controller of the city of St. Louis. And Darlene and I are longtime friends. Thank you for joining us today, Darlene. We're honored to have you. Brother Ron Hunt, where's Ron Hunt at? Is he here? Ron Hunt in the back. Thank you very much, my brother. 43rd district in the city. And uh, so, Brother Ronald Jones. Ronald, what's, what's your name? Your, Ronald. Is he here? He hasn't gotten here yet. I really want to recognize him. Brother Philip from Canada, who flew in from Toronto, thank you very much. He'll probably be our next minister in Guyana, South America, the only black country in South America. Though there's black people in every country in South America, there's only one, and that's Guyana. So I just wanted to now, there are other people who are with us that we're going to, Minister Donald will absolutely recognize. We also have um, 
uh, Fun Mia Mathis from the Scientologist Church, and Rubina Korishi. Rubina Korishi from the Scientologist Church. Thank you very much. So now, if I overlooked you, you know, you have to, don't blame it on my heart. My heart is in a good place, but my mind, uh, I just don't know your names and I can't call them all off. But at this time, before we move the program any further, I want to call up uh, Minister Farrakhan's representative from Memphis, Tennessee, a city that I love to visit. He always treats me very well, turns the people out, and he's really a progressive brother. They respect and love him in Memphis, uh, Brother Anthony Muhammad. Let's give him a warm round of applause. Assalamu alaikum. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful, I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, and I bear witness that Muhammad is his messenger. You look so beautiful um, from this. I wish you could see yourself from here, but if you would trust me with my eyes, you look so beautiful. We don't have a lot of time, and I won't take a lot of time, but I have the awesome task and the blessing of asking you to give to this cause, to help my brother, Brother Donald, and the brothers and sisters here in St. Louis to continue the work that you see them doing. You know things like this cost money, and I know, brothers and sisters, that we've spent money coming here. It costs a lot to get here, to do the things that we've done, but sometimes, you know, giving is good. It makes you feel good. You know, and when you give, to, not till it hurts, but till it helps, it makes you feel better. And I don't care what faith tradition we have, we know that in that faith tradition, there is a, a tenet or, or an attribute that's called giving. It's called charity or zakat or whatever we call it. So I'm asking you in the name of Almighty God, I'm asking you in the name of, on behalf of my brother, Brother Donald, and the believers here in St. Louis to give. Will you reach in your pocket and give? We don't have a lot of time. But would you pull out some 50s and some 20s and some 100s? We don't, we don't have time for a rally, but I'm asking you to give. And watch God bless you. And which one of us can say that we don't need blessings from Almighty God himself? So let us now put something in the bank that God can give to us, all right? So I'm going to give all that I can give right now. And I hope that you will do the same of those from the, the uh, uh, finance department will come forth. And in the other rooms, would you please give uh, to this cause? I want to thank you while they are passing the receptacles. Um, and I want to leave you and by just saying, you're in for a treat this morning. You and I are in for a treat today. And I ask that you open your hearts to hear what will be coming in a few minutes from this podium. Let me leave you, dear brothers and sisters, as I came to you with the greeting words of peace. I saw alaikum. Um, before we, we're going to let them finish with the collection uh, that we get everyone. And they have uh, Brother Reggie, Secretary Reggie, they've taken care of the rooms downstairs. Okay. And uh, Brother uh, Captain John just came in. He's in charge of the men in St. Louis. Come up front. And a lot of the brothers have him. You know, in the, uh, in the uh, I'm using the word loosely, organization but we, we have a nation, it's the brother who is in charge of the men. And I know we use the term student, uh, captain. You know, the word student in Arabic is Taliban. That's why they were called the Taliban. They were the students they were studying. So I don't want to call you Taliban. They may read, they may interpret it another way. Yes, sir. But, uh, but he's the brother that makes things happen for us. Whatever goes wrong, we blame him, okay? <laughs> when it goes right, we may say thank you. But I want to say thank you, Brother John. Thank, thank you for your work you. to make this happen, your labor to get us to move forward and get the brothers working. Thank you, thank and may Allah bless you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Now, what I'd like to do before I um, introduce uh, Brother... Um, Minister Donald, and what Minister Donald is going to do, whoever I missed, and Minister Donald went in the back, I think, with the minister just now. So uh, I just have a few 
people that I want to just recognize while I'm waiting for Minister Donald to come back in. Oh, here he is. Okay. Brother Minister Donald, in um, introducing you, I don't want to take long. I could take a long time, but I know the minister's here, and we're trying to get him on as quickly as possible. But let me say this. When Minister Donald came to this endeavor, uh, it was an uphill struggle. Uh, I was called to Chicago, and I was in Chicago, but I always had my heart in St. Louis watching over the progress that he would make. And he was able to hold it down. Many people want leadership, and they want it for different reasons. And uh, we learned a valuable lesson from the minister this morning. It's the people that count, and serving the people. Some people want it for ego. Some people want to be seen of others. They want to get the applause. And uh, one of the great Islamic scholars wrote, be careful of the fame and notoriety. And another Islamic uh, person, well, I shouldn't say that, because Khalil Gibran was a Lebanese Christian. But most of you know him from the book of the, of the prophet. He called it the prophet. But he said that uh, uh, power is like a heady wine. But Brother Donald tried to serve, very humble, and you can hear in him his Mississippi roots, okay? And, uh, and, but he preaches those Mississippi roots. And uh, Jamil Muhammad is in the back, and he'll bear witness. He knows every square inch of America, accents, where they're from, and so forth. But when we hear Minister Donald preach, and even though he's been in St. Louis most of his life, that Mississippi comes to the surface all the time. And Donald said, well, being that 80% of these black folks in uh, St. Louis got roots in Mississippi, I can preach to them. But I want to thank him for his work uh, in the city. I want to thank him. And this is a great day for him. And uh, Sister Helen, you should be very proud of your husband. And I know that you stood by him through all of this. I know he spent uh, days away from you and the girls and made the ultimate sacrifice to work a job for I don't know how many years. How many years were you on that job, Brother Donald? Oh, nearly, 30. nearly 30 years in the same length of time that he ran the mosque. So let's bring him on with a warm round of applause, <laughs> Minister Donald Muhammad. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I really don't like for people to stand for me. I'd rather you to stand when the minister comes. In the name of a lot of you, Nefer the Merciful, I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, and I bear witness that Muhammad is his messenger. I would like to take this opportunity to greet each and every one of you uh, this morning with the greeting words of peace. We say in the Arabic language, Assalamu alaikum. So, brothers and sisters, thank you so much for coming out today. It is a capacity house. Every seat in the house is taken in the spillover auditorium, even in the masala. All, two places downstairs in the fellowship hall and on the west end of the building downstairs. And, the, and they are all out there on the yard. I want to thank Mr. Chris Carter, the Alderman's brother, for letting us use his lot. Yes, and, uh, and uh, you know, and they all out there. We have three monitors out there. But that's not what, what, what I'm here to say. I'm here to introduce the man of the hour. As Michael Jackson said before he transitioned, this is it. All praises is due to Allah. In the book of Ecclesiastes, it says, there's a time and a season for everything under the heaven. Yes, and in the Holy Quran, in the 103rd surah, it says, by the time, surely man is at loss. And some translations say, down through the ages, except those who believe and do good. And exalt one another to truth. And exalt one another to patience. Yeah. yeah. In other words, you know, it is time right now. Right. And we don't know when the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan will be able to come back to the city of St. Louis. Yes. But this is one of his favorite cities for him to come. I was with him this morning and he said, it is so good to be in St. Louis. Yes. 
Yeah. And you know, and I hope and pray that we can beat the old prophecy that is in the Injil or the New Testament that says the light shines in the darkness, but the darkness comprehends it not. And I know that I'm talking to all of you in this auditorium, all of you throughout the building, and I know that you are part of the human intelligence. And when the minister comes out here, I want you to look at him. I want you to look at him. And then I want you to open up your ears and then open up your heart so you can receive a message of light. Because uh, light, the, in the Quran, there's a server called Al-Nur, the light. Is that right? So it, so it means that the Bible says that light, uh, excuse me, that light comes from, shines from the east even unto the west. So shall the coming of the Son of Man be. I'm here to announce to you today that you're fixing to lay eyes on the Son of Man that is in our midst. He is a blessing from Almighty God Allah. We are very grateful and we thank Almighty God Allah that Minister Farrakhan would have the heart to come to be with us today. And he is. All praises is due to Allah. Brothers and sisters, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Takbir! Takbir! of Allah the Beneficent, the Merciful, we give him praise and thanks for his mercy and his beneficence to the human family, that whenever any member of the family strays from his straight path and earns his displeasure, before he punishes them, he always raises from among the people a prophet or a messenger, and he gives that prophet or messenger what is called divine revelation. Yes, <clears throat> that by means of that revelation, he may guide the people back to his straight path and once again into his divine favor. Yes. As Muslims, we thank Allah for Moses and the Israelite prophets that gave us the Torah or the Old Testament. Yes. As Muslims, we thank Allah for Jesus and the apostles who gave to us what is called the New Testament. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And as Muslims, we thank Allah for Prophet Muhammad ibn Abdullah, who brought to the world the last revelation from God preceding the judgment of the present world, the Holy Quran. Yes. I am a student of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. And I could never thank Allah enough for his intervention in our affairs, in the person of Master Farad Muhammad, to whom praise is due forever, the great Mahdi that the Muslim world has been looking for, the great Messiah that the Jews and the Christians are looking for, he came among a people that were not looking for him at all. He came among a people that were lost, but he found us. He came among a people that were at the bottom of civilization, but he declared that the bottom rail would come to the top. He came among a people that once were a great people, 
but have been reduced to nothing that the scriptures might be fulfilled that he took the foolish things of the world to bring to naught the things that are wise. So we thank Allah for his coming and we thank him for raising up among us the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. I greet all of you, my dear <laughs> brothers and sisters, with the greeting words of peace. We say it in the Arabic language, Salam Alaikum. First, let me say, there are a lot of brothers standing on the outside who have never had a chance to see their brother. And there are many of you on the inside who always travel with me and see me wherever I am. And so you have the best seats in the house. Now, it would be an act of kindness if some of us would be kind enough to give up our seats and allow those who are standing outside, because there are no chairs out there, to come in and sit and enjoy <coughs> their brother. But not that you are not worthy to be where you are. And I'm happy to see all of you that are here. I'm so sad that, however, our presence draws more people than we are able to accommodate. As a result, many are uncomfortable. But for those of you who are standing on the outside, I promise you that I won't be long so that you'll <laughs> be in lots of discomfort, but in an orderly way as you listen, if you would like to ask one of the brothers outside to come in and take your place, um, that would be fine. Not, I said in an orderly fashion. Because now once I begin my subject, I don't like to be disturbed. Can you understand why? Maybe you don't understand why. But let me tell you why. <clears throat> you don't see me carrying notebooks. I didn't bring my Bible, neither my Quran. I talk to you from what Allah guides me to say based upon what you brought with yourselves into this house. Your many thoughts that you have about the nation of Islam, your many thoughts that you have about Muslims, your many thoughts that you have, some positive, some may be negative. But you hold those thoughts on your mind and on your heart. And by the time I finish today, if it is the will of Allah, most of your questions, you'll find them answered. Yes. Because Brother Farrakhan is uh, an instrument that God uses. And uh, if you make yourself a clean, clear channel, he knows what you think I don't. And he knows what you need necessarily, but I don't. But if you find that what I say is answering what you came to hear, then know that somebody bigger than I is over this and any movement uh, that's disturbing could disturb the flow of what Allah and his great uh, Christ may be giving to me for you. Yes, sir. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Well, let me begin. First, I want to thank uh, Brother Donald. I want to thank... Brother Akbar, I want to thank uh, all of the believers and those who helped to purchase this building 
and turn it into a mosque representing the teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. It's a job well done. What I have seen, it is so clean, and that is what we are taught, that cleanliness is not next to godliness. Cleanliness is godliness, for we can never invite the Spirit of God into a dirty place. So the outside is clean, meaning the walls, the ceiling, the floors. That is good. And we love to come out to dedications of mosques or churches or schools. And that is good, but there is no mosque, no school, no church. There is no edifice, either the great cathedrals in Rome or the great house in Mecca that is greater than you. For every house, no matter how beautiful it is, it is the handiwork of man. But you, you are the handiwork of God. And so you are the real church, yes, yes. the real mosque, yes. the real synagogue, yes. or to make it even plainer, you are the real house of God. Yes, but we have to make ourselves worthy for his indwelling spirit. Yes. Now, I want to talk today about these houses. We call them churches, we call them mosques, or masajids, we call them synagogues, we call them cathedrals, we call them temples, we call them cloisters. By whatever name these houses are, when Moses was commanded by God to build me a tabernacle, in the wilderness. See, that's like the first house. But why? Why does God need a house to represent him when he cannot be contained in any house? So what do we have these houses for? See, these places of worship were built under the guidance of the prophets of God that those who would come into such a house would be constantly reminded of the creator, his will, his way, and constantly fueling those who attend with that spirit that they may go out into a world owned and operated by Satan so that you could walk in the midst of evil, be in the world, but not of it. Does that make sense? So when we go to church, when we go to the mosque, say, we go for Juma prayer, we, we fast during the month of Ramadan, we go to church, we have great uh, worship services, great singing of songs, great preaching, and that is to stimulate in you the spirit of righteousness, which is your very nature, so that when you go out from such a house, you are fortified. It's like going somewhere and your immune system may not be working as well so you get a shot that the doctor gives you to kind of boost you up so that when you go out into a world of disease you can fight it off with the spirit that you got in the house of the Lord. Does that make sense? Well, good.
I didn't come here to dedicate that kind of house. See, that's a house that bears witness that Satan is boss. Now listen, there's nothing wrong with that. Satan was given a time to do his work. And he's done it quite well. In fact, he's done it so well till the houses of God, whether they're mosques, synagogues, temples, churches, cathedrals, Satan has gotten into the people and so there's just as much confusion inside the house as there is on the outside. And sometimes it's even worse in the house because we profess what we are not living. So we are hypocrites in the house. And the house, you know, has gotten so corrupt Mosque, synagogue, church, temple, Vatican, Mecca. Sorry. That God has said in his uh, scriptures of the book of Revelations, Behold, I make all things new. There'll be a new heaven and a new earth and the former things shall pass away. Well, are you in the new thing? Or are you in that thing that is about to pass away? <laughs> well, nobody wants to admit <laughs> that we're in something that is passing away away but you know how when we're getting old and I uh, understand this quite well <laughs> as I just uh, had my 77th birth anniversary so <laughs> as you begin to get older you know, things that you took for granted when you were young, you begin to notice something happening here. <laughs> I used to be able to read, but now I got to have some help. I used to be able to hear, but now I need help. Mm -hmm. I used to do a lot of things. Now I need pills to help me out. I can't see as well. I can't hear as well. Now I got pains in my joints. It's, you know, well, God is telling you something. You start seeing yourself when you used to walk, you walked upright, and then all of a sudden you get a slight lean, you know. <laughs> Gravity pulling us gradually back to the earth from whence we came. These are signs, and wise people are never heedless of signs, so you start writing down your will. Well, most of us don't have nothing to give nobody anyway, so we don't bother with that. But guess what? The church is like that. Yes, sir. The mosque is like that. The synagogue is like that. The great cathedrals are like that. The great house of Mecca is like that. Yeah, the, the church and the religions are getting weaker and weaker yes, in their ability to transform human life. Yes, you can come to the church and you can be whatever you want to be. Yes, Preach a nice sermon, go sniff some coke. 
Did I say something wrong? Sing a nice song in the choir and behave yourself as a, a male that has female tendencies or a female that has male tendencies, even though you know what the scripture teaches. Lying and stealing and backbiting and slander. All of this is going on. The Pope is beside himself trying to straighten up the church with the abuse of little girls and boys and big scandal, you know. I mean, all the houses are like that. There's a few, you know, that are trying to be real holy. And we give them credit for holiness. But sometimes in your holiness, you become so self-righteous. You become judgmental of others that don't appear to be as holy as you would like to be. So the Bible has all kind of uh, talk by Jesus condemning the person that wants to get the beam out of his brother's eye before he gets the mote out of his own, you know. So the houses of worship are kind of messed up and powerless in a world of evil. All kind of stuff going on right around the church. Come on. Around the mosque. Around the synagogue. Around the great edifices. But the people inside, we are saved. But you pass by the unsaved on the way to the house of salvation. But you won't, you won't reach down and say, brother, come on with me. It's a message that I believe if you heard it, it will make a difference in your life. But no, no, no. Oh, no, <laughs> this is terrible. This person is dirty. Look how nasty they look. Look at that prostitute. Ain't she something? And then you in the church in a mini dress. The poor pastor can't preach. Because your dress has slid up so that the poor man has to always be looking at heaven. Lest he go to hell for sure. So Farrakhan, well, what kind of house did you come to dedicate? <laughs> well, I'd like to talk about the houses today that God would make new. Because the scripture teaches that God's coming is after the working of Satan. Well, I read the Holy Quran, brother. I never read that in the Holy Quran. Oh, yes, in there, but I'll, I'll be glad to quote it for you. God and uh, Satan were having a conversation. And Satan says to God, respite me till the day when they are raised. They who? Raised how? Satan is asking God, delay my punishment, delay my doom until the day when they are raised. Well, who needs to be raised? And raised from what? And raised by whom? Yes, For what? Yes, Come on. <laughs> See, you've been looking at the great resurrection day that you're going to rise up from the grave and see your loved ones again. So you don't pay no attention. To your life now. 
in expectancy that God would let you waste it one more time? Have you ever seen anybody come back to tell you anything about how sweet it is on the other side? Talk to me. God says in the scripture, he's the God of the living and not of the dead. For the grave cannot praise God. So if you don't live like you should live during the time that you have life, you have not earned another life if there is one in another place. So it's this life that we have to be concerned about. It's how we live the life that only God can give. That's the life we have to be concerned about. It's how we treat one another in this life. It's how we act in this life that makes us worthy of what the scripture calls the hereafter. Yes, Don't you know or do you know how old the earth is? It's only 57,255,000 square miles. And people have been dying and coming to birth and going back down and coming back up and going back down and coming back up for millions and millions of years. Now imagine on the day of resurrection if everybody that ever died got their bones back, got their flesh back, got their blood back, the earth would be gone. Because all the stone of the earth, which is your bone, you would have used it up. All the earth that is your flesh would be used up. All the waters of the earth would be used up if billions and billions of people that have died would come back when a trumpet is blown. You misunderstand your scripture and because you have been deceived, you cast your lot for the other side and do nothing for the life on this side. So you die as you live, never accomplishing what God created you for and put you here for. So you're like a seed that has never had water to germinate it so that you could know what God has put within every human being. But it's your duty to discover what he gave you. It's your duty to nurture what he gave you. Exploit it for yourself, your family, your community, your nation, and the world. Yes, sir. But most of us live and die with dreams of greatness. That you really are great. But we live and we die with dreams of our greatness that we never quite discover in real life. Respite me till the day when they are raised. They who? The people that are literally dead but don't know that they are dead. Listen now. Dead but don't know that we are dead. The Bible says all flesh is like grass. It withers. 
You live long enough, you see yourself withering. Yes, <laughs> and soon that which withers goes. The essence of the person, the energy of that person's life, the spirit, all right, all right, all right. that's greater than the flesh. But when the spirit is not activated, oh man, when the spiritual person that God made you to be to master the flesh. Yes, Come on. When you are mastered by your flesh yes, and by fleshly desires, yes, then you are dead in the spirit, but you live for the gratification of your flesh. Yes, so the resurrection of the dead is actually a call to the power of your being that is dead under the flesh and fleshly lusts yes. and desires. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Come on. I, I want a car. Well, that's nice. Ain't nothing to that. Uh, I got to get out of debt. Well, that's right. <laughs> nothing much to that. But see, these are little small, cheap stuff for the people of God. Seems to me that if you really understood who you really are and were alive in the spirit, you could master the circumstances of your life that now master you and me. You wouldn't be walking to governor or mayor begging them for a job. You wouldn't be looking to your former slave master to do for you what you got the ability to do for yourself if you were in fact alive. You're dead. But respite me. All right. God says, surely you are the res of the respited ones. I'm going to delay your doom. Because yes, see, this world has to go. Yes, Do you love a world like this? No, no, just think with me for a minute. Do you like to turn on your television and see our young girls half naked on the screen lustful making men lust after them is that the kind of world that you think you should love and yet claim Jesus or Moses or Muhammad or the prophets is, is this the kind of world that you pleased in? The murder rate rising? Rape and robbery is the order of the day? Is this, is this the world that you like? The book of James says, the love of this world is enmity with God. So my dear brother pastor will say, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. Let me help you with that scripture. Yes. <laughs> now, if the apostle would say the love of this world uh -huh. is hatred yes, to God, then could it be this world that God would give his only begotten son for? Look at the definite article, the. God so loved the world. You're living in a world, but the world is his world. He wouldn't give the life of his great prophet or son, as you call it, 
to die to save a world that he already prophesied he was going to destroy. <laughs> Listen to me. He gave you the flood in the days of Noah. He gave you the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. He gave you the destruction of Pharaoh so you would learn that he hates this kind of world and what this world is doing. God so loved the world, his world, that he would give his only begotten from the Christian perspective that those who believed in him would not perish from what? From the fall and destruction of this world, but would be in a world that is considered everlasting life because that world will never die. And those of us who participate with Christ for that world, there is no death for you. You're going to die physically. But the spirit that rules that life, that world, that's an eternal spirit. Now, after God told Satan, surely you are of the respited ones, check out Satan's answer. He said, uh-huh. He said, well, now that you caused me to remain disappointed, why are you disappointed, Satan? Because you're coming to mess up my world. You remember when Jesus was casting out demons? When the demons were coming out of the woman, the demons started talking to Jesus. They said, why are you persecuting me before time? And Jesus told them, in, in other words, how could I bring demons up out of you if it wasn't time? See, so... He's giving you, he's giving you a hint as to the work of the true houses. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If you're not casting out demons yes, sir. and transforming people yes, sir. and making soldiers yes, sir. in a war against evil. Yes, sir. And you in the wrong house. Yes, sir. Come on. See, you in a house that's holding things as they are. Yes, so I can tweet, tweet up to that house. Yes, sir. And I can sleep with the women in the congregation or the men. Yes, and I'm not trying to be better. Yes. Yes. Come on. I just made evil fair seeming now. Yes, so we'll justify our freakishness by saying God is love. <laughs> See, in some of the pastors, you're just afraid to preach a true gospel because your money comes from letting people do as they want to do. But now, if, if you are a real disciple of Christ. See, then you are not a pastor that is accepting people as they are without a thought of transforming their lives. Paul says, be ye not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by what? The renewal of your mind. Ooh, I'm going to say something in a few seconds. Listen, listen. All right, Satan. You said to God, yeah, you messed me up. You caused me to be disappointed. And so God, in, in other words, says to Satan, well, what you going to do about it? <laughs> Satan said, well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to come after them. Yes, come on, come on. In your straight path. Well, what is the straight path of God? It is in the path of truth, in the path of his divine revelation. I'm going to come after them even when they got the Torah in their hand. When they got the Quran and the Bible in their hand, I'm coming after them and I'm going to make them all deviate. So 
God says to Satan, well, go right ahead. Yes, sir. But whosoever follows you, I will certainly fill hell with you all. Yes, so now it's a war. See, when God comes, it's a time of war. I'm going to make that clear. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. God don't come to play with Satan. He's coming to make war with Satan. So he te Paul tells the early church, put on what? Come on, sister, tell me. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of Satan. Well, where's your armor? I'm drunk. <laughs> I just got a reefer. I mean, I'm cracked up. I mean, I'm a little gay too. <laughs> but I, I got my arm on. Well, evidently, it didn't protect you. <laughs> Now, I don't want you to think that I'm mouthing off on people that have sin. Because the book says that all our righteousness is as filthy rags with God. Ain't none of us that holy that we can throw off on somebody else because of some shortcoming they may have. Let's get that clear. So if God comes, he comes to make war with Satan. That's big. So the houses that are set up, that are dedicated to the God whose coming is after the workings of Satan, has to be a church, a mosque, a synagogue that goes to war with the evil effects of Satan's effect on the human being. Ooh. Now watch this. Here we go. All right? Okay, okay. Now, Moses comes. He's a sign. Because the Bible said it was coming a man that would be like Moses in the last day. Well, Moses was a lawgiver. So was Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, but the law don't make people right. The law puts fear in you for doing wrong and makes you appear right. I'm coming to something. Now look, in those days, you know, the, the, the law of Moses if a child rose up against a parent and struck the parent, what was the punishment? What was the punishment? See, you're not answering because you don't know. The punishment was death. A man could not dress like a woman and a woman could not dress like a man. The punishment was death. Lord have mercy. And the people carried it out. On, hey, you commit fornication? Well, I love that she looks so fine. Yeah, yeah and I had to get involved. Said, good, come on up here, dig a hole, <laughs> put him in it and bury him up to his neck. And everybody get a stone and stone him or her until they're dead. And everybody had to watch it. Now you was watching and you got a stone too. But I seen Susie over there. I sure want to get to Susie. But <laughs> and every time I throw that stone, I start killing that desire in me. So after I get finished killing Susie, that, I mean, Amy, that killed my desire for Susie, yes, and I look righteous, because I walked away from the killing. 
<laughs> so in the time of Jesus, in, in the time of Jesus, see, the woman, check it out. The woman was found in adultery. She didn't confess. Somebody found her. But they only brought the woman. Something wrong with that picture. <laughs> and now they're ready. They're going to stone her. But Jesus was there. And as they raised the stone, yes, Come on. Jesus knelt down and wrote in the sand. One of you that is without sin, you cast the first stone. All of a sudden, nobody could find a stone to throw. <laughs> then Jesus asked a question, woman, where are your accusers? Now, he was a holy man. And he said, neither do I accuse you, but go and sin no more. Now, Jesus was a different kind of fellow. He loved the law. He said he didn't come to change the law, but to fulfill what was written in the law. But yet, he raised the people to a higher manifestation of the law. Killing people is not what Jesus came to do. Saving people is what he came to do. So, his aim was not to kill but to heal. Yes. Now look at his teaching. He said, well, I didn't come to change the law, but to fulfill what was written in the law. But he gave the highest manifestation of law. He said, the greatest commandment is this. Now you got 10 that Moses gave you. I'm only going to give you two. He said, love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And the second commandment is like unto that, love your neighbor as yourself. On these two hang all the law and the prophets. So Jesus now is raising people into a demonstration of love. That makes you live the law with ease. Because if I love you, I can't lie on you. I can't bear false witness against my neighbor. If I love you, I can't steal from you. If I love you, I can't come in your house and go after your wife. If I love you, I cannot covet whatever God has blessed you with. I cannot covet my neighbor's house, my neighbor's wife, my neighbor's ox, my neighbor's donkey. I can't covet nothing because I'm above that. I love. And if I love my neighbor as I love myself, I'm going to practice the best religion. And what is that? I was talking to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad one day. He said, brother, do you know what the best religion is? Well, I, he had been teaching me Islam. 
Why would he ask me what the best religion is? Well, I didn't want to answer then. So I said, uh, kind of had a puzzled look, you know. He said, brother, the best religion is to do unto others as you would have others do unto you. And that golden rule is in all the great religions of our planet. And if you love your neighbor. Yes, You're not going to do to your neighbor what you don't want to have done to yourself. Yes, the prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said you love for your brother what you love for yourself. Yes. You're not a Muslim until you love for your brother what you love for yourself. Why, why? But the catchphrase in that that gets people messed up is the word brother. And they came to Jesus and they asked, they said to him, Jesus, your mother and your brother are outside the temple and seeketh you. He said, my, my mother and my brother are in the temple with me. Then in another place, he says, my mother and my brother are they who do the will of my father. So sometimes in our religious circles, see, we don't even do good by the people that we claim are our brothers and sisters. See, in the Islamic world, when you say, if your brother has no soup and you have a bowl, half of your bowl belongs to your brother. So now you see a homeless person out there who is not necessarily in the mosque but your eyes only can see brotherhood in the narrow context of definition of what you call brother. So you leave the homeless brother out there because he's not in the mosque. You leave the destitute sister out there because she's not in the church. Wrong! The Quran ends that. It says it like this. Allah created Adam from a single essence. Yes, and of his mate, he created her from the same essence. And from these two, he spread many men and women. Yes, so if you look beyond the narrowness of a name, Christianity, Islam, Judaism, Baptist, Methodist, Sufi, Shiite, Sunni, Presbyterian, Catholic. See, these are narrow definitions for you to say, that's my brother. But if you look at your actions, you're not even good to those who are in the narrow context of what you say is your brotherhood. But in the context of the God who comes at the end of the world of Satan, you see all humanity now coming from that single essence. So what you got if you see somebody in need, yes, you share it. Yes, if you see somebody in need and you can help to raise them, you raise them. Yes, because in the larger context, that's your family too. So, what kind of church is Farrakhan coming here to dedicate? So those of you who like buildings, you're in the wrong place here. Uh, this ain't the most beautiful building in St. Louis. So if you're about nice buildings and whatnot, then don't come here. 
Because this is just a building that's clean and nice. They worked hard. They got it. It's so nice. So if you thought that I was coming to make over a building, you in out of your mind. But we worked so hard. That's good. That's very good. But I came to give you an assignment from this house that really will show how this house is dedicated and what this house is dedicated to and for. And if the people in the house yes, sir. Yes, sir. are not dedicated to that to which the house is dedicated, yes, sir. Woo. and you need to find you another place yes. to go because this one is for some work to be done. Yes, it's set down in the midst of our people right. who are suffering out there. Yes who are dying out there, who are killing each other out there, who are dropping out of school out there, who have no jobs out there. This mosque is not set down here to be dedicated to just sitting down glorying in a building. God that I serve and I'm inviting you to serve is looking for soldiers yes, sir. that want to go to war with Satan. See? What are you singing on with Christian soldiers for and you don't even consider yourself on the battlefield? What do you go to church for? See, these are places of regrouping. Yeah. It ain't like the old church yeah. or the old mosque where you go to just have yourself fortified to go out and see if you can make it another day in Satan's world. No, no, no. This kind of house is dedicated to destroying Satan's world and establishing the kingdom of God on earth. While the houses, the walls are clean, ceilings are bright and white, and they look so nice, I would not like this to be like the house that Jesus saw. He said, these are whited sepulchers, and in them are the bones of dead men. They got this outward appearance of righteousness. But the work of righteousness is not being done. And let me tell you something about any house that's dedicated to the God who has come to end Satan's world. And you don't do that work, then soon you turn on each other. Because see, the work of defeating Satan starts in yourself because he got a hold on us. That's why it talks about the renewing of the mind. This Jesus fella, man, he, you know, he said, well, Moses said, if you commit adultery with a woman, you have committed adultery. He said, I say. I say. What do you say, Jesus? I say, if you look at a woman with lust in your heart, you've already committed the act. Let me stop there for a minute. Now look, sister. Either you want to help Satan 
or you want to help God defeat Satan. Now listen, listen now. I'm going to talk to you about style. Because see, suppose you've been styled by Satan thinking you styled by God. Take a look at yourself. Do you think if you were living in the time of Jesus that you could come in his presence with one of these, you know, hip huggers, come on, your stomach out, your butt, you know what I mean, just laid in the pants. I mean. made up, you know, your, your eyes all dazzling. The Koreans have fixed your hair. You know. yeah. Yeah. They have painted your nails and your feet, you know what I mean? You don't want to cover them pretty feet. Oh, no. I want that man to see. See what? I find my foot is. So he can fall in love with me from my head down to my toes. So I got my hair fixed. But the Koreans know we love hair. So I bought a lot of it. Hell, I'm not going to cover my hair like them Muslims say. And I'm not going to wear no dress that don't show the beauty of my form. Because I got to catch me a man. Are you sure that's what you're catching? Because if, if you're fishing with your backside as bait, oh, you didn't hear this preacher. If that's what you're fishing with, that's exactly what you got. And when you lost your butt, you lost that man. Because he saw a bigger one down the street. He saw a better one down the street. Wait a minute, sisters. Sister, you, you are so beautiful. Yes, you are. God knew what he was doing. If you weren't that beautiful, if your form wasn't attractive to a man, you know what I mean? We wouldn't have so many children running around. I mean, it's just a natural thing. But because it's natural, you don't want to be a victim of nature. You want to use nature in the way God wanted nature to be used. Check this out. Come on. So, if you covered the beauty of your body and the beauty of your hair, which is the adornment of a woman, then a man could only be attracted to you by something other than what he sees when you undress yourself in front of him. Check it out now. So if we got to fight now, listen, we're warriors for God. We need all the help we can get from our women. We're going out in the community to fight. And here she come to the door. Oh, oh, who's that handsome man? Hi, brother. In her mind, she said, I'm going to see if he's as strong as he says he is. Are you selling that paper? Why don't you come in? <laughs> she looking so fine, let me tell you. 
That's bait, brother. And she baiting you in. And all of a sudden, you forget your mission. Well, I was only trying to invite her to the mosque. <laughs> and she waylaid you and invited you into her bed. So she, Satan won that one. Round one. Respite me till the day when they are raised. Poor fella, he ain't raised yet. <laughs> He's still dead in his flesh, and so is she. Yes, sir. Now, when a woman thinks that the beauty of her face and the beauty of her body is what is so much of an attraction to a real man, then she must display herself because she wants a real man in her life. Nothing wrong with that desire, sister. That's a good desire to want a real man in your life, but you got to know what a real man is. So now you say, well, man, I got that, you know. So you notice how you all watch each other? Sisters. see a woman walking the man didn't spot her first you did <laughs> and she's so tight and her stuff is so wrong right <laughs> till you try to make conversation with him to keep his mind somewhere <laughs> so he won't see something that naturally appeals uh -huh. to the eye of a natural man. Yes, sir. But if you and our women out there didn't think so much on the outer beauty and started realizing where real beauty is. See, beauty is not spelled B-O-O-T-Y. <laughs> So when you get it all twisted, then you think that's booty is beauty. So you don't work to cultivate the real beauty that is a woman. And when God created woman, he knew what he was doing. He gave her all of that all right. These are her adornments. That's what the Quran calls your breasts. We don't have them. Except you want some. <laughs> now, sisters, if he want to take hormone treatment, he can develop some. But these are adornments. Your hips. They are adornments of the beauty of a female body. Yeah. So the Quran says, no, you cover your adornments. Why? Because when you adorn yourself, see, the adornment is the attractive feature. So if you attract a man to your bosom, so we get these, you know, brassiers that really make them stand up and out, you know. <laughs> In your face. Is this subject detached? <laughs> I'm not. I'm. Not, I'm not trying to degenerate the subject matter. I'm talking about a war that we need to win, and our women are our co-warriors in this war against Satan. Now, sisters, 
I was with the Honorable Elijah Muhammad at the Syria Mosque in Pittsburgh in 1957, and he took a sister out of the audience who had a short dress, and he called the Muslim sister up who was dressed like this sister and stood them side by side. And he said, this woman had the short dress. She is a member of the righteous just like this woman. Yes. Not that this woman dressed in this white garment here is better than this woman in the short dress. But he asked the question, if these two women were walking the street and a drunk wanted to act the fool, which one would he talk to? Would he talk to this one in a long dress? He ain't seeing nothing but the beauty of her face. And here come one showing him the beauty of her body. He ain't talking to the woman that's covered. He's looking at that woman. Oh, and he drunk, but he could do it sober. Hey, baby. Man, you sure look good to me. See, and that feeds a silly woman's ego. Because you look good to him for him to destroy you. You're too precious for that. You're the woman of God. You're too precious for that. So I want to go back to Satan now talking. I'm going to come at them in your straight path. See, I'm going to make them deviate while they think they're worshiping God. How could I, as a Muslim, yes, bomb the mosque of my brother, who is a Shiite, and I am Sunni? How could I, as a Muslim, yes, strap a bomb on myself and kill people who haven't done anything to me? Yes, there's a jihad. Jihad is an intense struggle against something of disfavor. Yes, when I was in Mecca, we all had to pick up stones and throw at shaitan. Yes, right. A big white rock. And boy, was we throwing that stone. <laughs> saying Allah Akbar. And you could see tens of thousands of hands just going throwing stones at Satan. But what about the Satan that lives within? What stone do you have to kill that Satan that whispers into your heart and mind that makes evil look good? Come on now that talks you out of doing right when you know what right is and encourages you to do the wrong thing so that after the wrong thing is done, you lay down in your bed at night and you can't sleep because your own conscience is beating you up. This is war, man. So we're not dedicating this moth to be a house where people come and sit down and listen to lectures about what the white man did or didn't do. And the white man, the white man, the white man, shut up. He not bothering you. If you want to accomplish something, you can do it today. You don't need to keep blaming somebody else for your own misery. Yes, he done you wrong. No question about that. But you can't live your life blaming others. When God, like he did for Lazarus, has removed the stone from the face of the grave, you can come out if you want to. So I close, dear brothers and sisters, Jesus said, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. 
how do we get up into the mind and correct our thinking? Because that's where sin is. It's right here. Once it starts, it starts here as a thought. And then it manifests into reality. But the thought is reality. You didn't hear me. Because there's a saying, if you can see it and believe it, you can achieve it. So what you see is real. If it's based on a thought, the thought is real. The vision is real. Now the work must accompany that. And then you bring out of your mind what you have envisioned. This house has to be dedicated to the transformation of the lives of our people to make them into that which God intended for them to be when he created us in the beginning. Regardless to what is out there, how bad it is, that's our field of labor. Yes, and if we leave them like that, this will be an empty house. The walls will be in disrepair. Yes, the people will leave because you won't be able to pay the note to the bank. Yes, so this ain't a blessing if it got a note attached to it. Yes, Did I say something wrong? No, if there's a note attached to this, this could be a blessing. But it won't be a blessing until you can burn the mortgage. And in order to burn the mortgage, it ain't about walls and ceilings and doors and floors. It's about having people as beautiful inside. As an example of what can be produced with those on the outside. Yes. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, I was like a piece of metal rusted and corroded. And God took me and cleaned me up and set me beside the other pieces of metal to show them what they could do become if they use the cleaning agent that I use. Now look at this. If this is not a house of examples, female and male, you don't throw off on your sister because she doesn't yet know her own value. That's for you to teach her her value as a woman. And when she knows her value, believe me, she will not allow no man to defile her, and she will not defile herself. So this has to be a house dedicated to making soldiers that are examples of what we teach. This is not a house that we just come for meeting. This is a house where if we meet, we meet to prepare to go out yes, in the street yes, where the people are, yes, where the killings are going on, yes, where the people are suffering. And you walk among your people yes, unafraid yes, sir. of the wildness of your people. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You say, but, but they're vicious out there. They're killers out there. They're worse than anything I've ever seen. We've never seen no black people like these today. Where did they come from? Who did they come from? Why are they like that? Let me tell you why. Your children are not like you. 
they're warriors. The male and the female. They love fighting. You didn't make them like that. Time and circumstances. And the God of time and circumstances made them into warriors. That's why you're not free. Because you're not a warrior. See, that's why even though you were willing to march with Dr. King, march in the civil rights movement, you marched to be included in a world that God was taken down. What good does it do you if you can go in the finest restaurant and eat food, sleep in the finest hotels and motels, but you haven't built none for yourself? You are dependent people. So our children are born into a world where the schools have nothing to offer them. You telling them, stay in school. Get your education. And they're saying, look at what it made of you. How many degrees do you have, mama? How many degrees do you have, Papa? But what have you done with it to provide a future for me? You took your degree and went and begged your former slave master and his children for a job. Now there are no more jobs. What have you prepared for your children? So you say they're disrespectful of their elders. Well, they look at their elders. What have you done? What has your life been? Did you prepare anything for your children? And the answer is no. no. So they're mad. And they don't like preachers. They think preachers are pimps. Hustling their grandmothers, their grandfathers. Hustling people that love the Lord for their own personal aggrandizement. But we build nothing for the children. Suffer the little children, Jesus said, to come unto me. But preachers who are looking for money and not for the saving of human life are not interested in young people that don't have jobs and can't tithe. So the children are growing up. Why should I go to this school? What am I being taught? There ain't nothing in that school. Christopher Columbus discovered America. See, that's white supremacy teaching. That's why you can't leave your master because he's trained you to depend on him and you've raised a generation that cannot depend on him and cannot depend on you. So to hell with you and your master, I'm going to depend on myself. See, I'm talking from their minds now. I ain't got no job. Ain't nobody made no job for me. The school you want me to go to is teaching me garbage. And then if I raise hell, they're going to take me and give me Ritalin and make you sign? We have failed our children. So now our 
children are showing us that they're filled with anger, bitterness, and hatred. So they're violent. They're savage. They kill their elders. They kill their brothers. They kill their sisters. They rape the girls. Make them prostitutes. Hustle for me. I'm better for you than your own father. He never gave you nothing. But if you use what God gave you in the right way, get some money and you bring it to me. I dress you in fine clothes that your mom and father never gave you. See? Now you've got the gangs going because in the house there's no unity. You, yeah, yeah, you, we failed our children. Accept that. I know you did the best you could, but evidently the best we could is not good enough because the enemy is your teacher and he's never going to teach you how to prepare a future for your children. So here you are laid off now from your job. I, I've been working this job for 40 years. And they just laid me off just like that. Come on, Your leaders go to the White House and say to our president, Brother Barack, we need a jobs bill. We need a jobs bill. And the president will say, why, certainly we do. Twenty-five million Americans out of work, unemployed and underemployed. Let me ask you a question. Do you think he's going to create millions of jobs for our millions of unemployed? You want a jobs bill? That's what the enemy brought you here for. There was full employment during slavery. Every black man had a job. <laughs> but when the enemy makes machines to do what we used to do, say, well, we don't need the Negro anymore. The Negro. We don't need our Negroes anymore. There was always a job during the time that I was a little boy for my mother to go into white folks' homes and clean their homes and cook for them and then come home and make a home for me and my brother. But today, you see, the Hispanic sister and the Hispanic brother got that job. You don't even have it in the movie anymore. Mantan Morland and, and Steppin' Fetcher and uh, Butterfly McQueen and you know all the ones that they would look as the mammies. You can't get that job now. The hell with you as the mammy. The hell with you as a butler. The hell with you as a cook and a maid. You can't even sweep my floor no more. Bring me Brother Gomez. <laughs> Bring me Sister Hernandez. You mad as hell saying they got my job. <laughs> Is that the job you looking for? With your lazy self? You not looking to create employment for yourself? <laughs> A nation of consumers. Yes, your children are angry. You say, pull your pants up, child. You look stupid. Pull your pants up. They say, hell no. I ain't following nothing you say. But it, I saw a boy. Yesterday I was going to teach somewhere. This boy didn't only have his pants down. He had the belt 
under his buttocks, all his drawers were showing. I said, boy, this is really something here. Yeah. <laughs> See, and you're looking at your children and you're saying, what happened? They're organized. you in disunity. See? Organized gangs taking over the community. Organized dope dealers. That boy, he was selling crack. And he roll up his money, he pull out a what? <laughs> I'm making money. We didn't provide nothing for him. So you, his mother, he's selling dope and bringing you the money. Some of it. Are you paying the rent, paying the car note, and looking the other way? So this house, this can't be one of them go to meeting houses. Praise the Lord houses. Sit in the pew and shut up and give your money and do nothing to help your community. If this is that kind of house, after this meeting, close it and don't nobody come back in here again. But if this is going to be a house dedicated to the work and the cause of the transformation of our lives and our people's lives, then you're in the right place. But don't look at no walls. Don't look at no doors. Don't look at no floors. Look inside yourself and prepare your mind to do the work that has to be done to destroy Satan's grip on the most beautiful generation that we've ever produced. In closing, you see how much murder is going on in this community. And we don't know how to stop it. So some of our leaders are saying we better call the National Guard and, 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 and because we can't do nothing. And some of us are like, we got to take back the streets. That's what we got to do. And they say it in places like this. <laughs> but they say it like this. We got to take back our streets. <laughs> and when they get out there and see them guns, uh -uh, we, uh, call the God. <laughs> uh, you ain't into taking back the streets in that kind of spirit. You can't frighten these children. They are made differently. They're not afraid. You've got to appeal to them, and they can be appealed to. But you got to have the right spirit, the right mind, and the right message, and the right strength to go after the people in the street. So. I won't even say the prayer of dedication because I've been doing that for an hour and a half now. <laughs> this house is dedicated to the work of God and his Christ, his Messiah, of transforming human life and making this ghetto life a part of his kingdom. If you're afraid to do that, this ain't the house for you. But if you really want to roll up your sleeves and first transform your life, and then let's be examples of a transformed soldier. See, because these are soldiers out there. They're not going to be attracted by punctified men. That ain't going to happen. Did I say something wrong? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If you ain't got no fight in you, yes, it's the wrong place for you. Yes, well, you say, I'm, I'm kind of old now to have a lot of fight. 
That's why the Bible says, old men for counsel, young men for war. So if you that old that you can't counsel a young man as to how to fight and win, this ain't your house. Go to the funeral parlor and hang around till it's your time. But this is not your house. But I know I'm a 77 year old warrior. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. When you see a lion that can't hunt, he's dead. No such thing as retiring a lion. If he got one tooth, He going to find something to chew on. See, he not one of these zoo lions that you got to throw him some meat. These kind of lions hunt. And there's no retirement parties for old lions, old wolves, old coyotes, old wild dogs, old snakes. You die on your post. When you can't do it no more, then die. So I thank Allah for the soldiers, male and female. Yes, sir. Because St. Louis is a great city. You are one of the greatest cities of soldiers in America. Strong black men and strong black women live in this city. And you can't reach them unless you are strong. But being strong in righteousness. Oh, man. I, I wish I could help you to see how much power you got when you're trying to be right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know, the earth carries its atmosphere. And you can't see it, but the earth's atmosphere is comprised of fire. Yes, uh huh. Falling objects falling into the earth, they catch on fire. Because the earth's atmosphere is fire. Yes, sir. See, uh, well, you're from the earth. If you understand who you are and try to be yourself, you carry fire with you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I've never seen a wild dog. Uh -huh. That wasn't afraid of fire. <laughs> but if you don't know who you are, yes, sir. not trying to be yourself, yes, sir. you have this punctified atmosphere. Yes, sir. Excuse that expression. It's you know it's from the street, you know. But you know I didn't fall down from heaven, you know. <laughs> I came up from the street. Yes, sir. And I don't think any of us that want to be soldiers uh -huh. need to go out and make your people think that you came down from heaven. Yes. We smoke reefer. How many of us used to smoke reefer? Raise your hand. How many of you still smoking? No, 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 no. See, if, if we used to smoke it, but don't smoke it no more, that's a victory. If we used to drink, and we don't drink anymore, that's a victory. 
if we used to beat our wives and we don't do that anymore, that's a victory. If we used to fornicate and commit adultery and we don't do that no more, that's a major victory. If you used to gamble and you don't gamble anymore, that's a victory. So when you have gotten those kind of victories over your own and my own and our own moral weaknesses, then you can go among your people and you'll see them even straightening up when they see you coming. I had a cousin that, bless her heart, she died as an alcoholic. But whenever I would come to her home, you know, she would hide the alcohol under the couch, you know, because Jean was coming, and, and she know Jean don't drink, and not that I bothered her about drinking, but she felt bad drinking in my presence. See? I was on a ship the other day on the Tom Joyner cruise. And I came out of my room, and a brother to the right was just loud, and he had greeted his brother. And when he saw me, he said, oh, forgive me, Brother Farquhar. I said, for what? I didn't mean to be loud in your presence. I didn't tell him not to stop enjoying the fellowship of a brother that he hadn't seen in a long time and met, but he felt bad. Yeah. I went to the Source Awards. They gave me a, 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 a MC, a gold yeah. MC, you know. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, as a top rapper, they say. <laughs> but before they called me up, for my award, they had a comedian, and he was as raw and filthy as anybody could be. I mean, it was so nasty. I sat and I listened. I didn't say nothing. But after I got my award, and I was backstage, he came. He said, oh, brother minister, please forgive me. I, I'm so sorry. I didn't know you was in the audience because if, if I knew you was in the audience, see, he didn't respect the presence of his own brothers and sisters because he felt that they was as funky and low down as, his, as himself. But because he knew I was there, he wanted to clean up his language. And even on the ship that night, uh -huh. mm -hmm. Dougie Fresh, <laughs> this great hip hop artist, and he's a friend of mine. And Dougie came to my little cabin and he said, Minister, I got a hip hop review, man. And it's all the best rappers tonight, but it's at 2 a.m. in the morning. And, 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 and minister, I would just like you to come, not at the beginning at 2, <laughs> <laughs> but at the end of the session at about 3.30 <laughs> to have something to say to the rappers. Come on now, come on. Would you do it, minister? Yes. And I said, sure. I said, but two o'clock is so far past my bedtime. <laughs> you know, when you get old, you know what I mean? You, you go to bed <laughs> at a reasonable hour. Because we get up early, early in the morning, so we don't hang out all night. But since I was on the ship, and I was a prisoner in my little cabin, I said, I'm going to go to bed, and tonight I'm going to take the invitation of my brother. Guess what? 
I got there at about 2 a.m., a little before 2. Uh -oh. uh oh. Oh, they was telling them. And I'm just sitting there studying our people. Because that's my work. And then the rappers came. And Lord, it by nature, this one, that one. I mean, they were tearing it up. And I was sitting there just watching our people. How beautiful we are. How, I mean, we're just a great people, just messed up here, you know what I mean? Yeah. Not nothing. <laughs> <laughs> However, at around 3.30, they says, time, minister, you got to go down. So I went down. When they called me up on the stage, the brother introduced me. And I was surprised how the hip hop generation received me. So much love, so much respect. And I opened my remarks by saying, I enjoy watching you groove to the rhythm of the music. What I hope for is to see you groove to the rhythm of truth. Yes, see, now look. Jesus said it like this. I piped to you all the day long and you have not danced. See? People that talk truth that demand something of you, you don't dance to that music because it puts on you a responsibility. What I said today, if you agreed with me, it puts you in a state of mind. Now, either you're going to change because if you don't change and you do what you always do, you're going to go out in the street with your wonderful form showing. And some man is going to talk nasty to you. And you're going to remember what I said. Well, he, he ain't buying me no new clothes. That's for sure. Well, I sure ain't. But the same way you got those, take your time and get something that's beautiful but not attracting lust in a man for you. Yes, See, then you're helping God. And you're helping him. Because yes, he can't think right. Yes, and he won't ever think right yes, if you don't help him. Yes, so that's helping God in the time of war on Satan. Choose your clothes wisely. Your, all your back is out. All the way down. All the way down to the top of your buttock. And then you got a tattoo. Some of you even write stuff on your backside, giving messages. Well, naturally, a man learn how to read. <laughs> Can you help God out, please? Can you help us win a war for the lives of our people? You young brothers. See, if this is the kind of life you want, to really be a soldier for God and learn how to help your people up out of that condition that they're in, this is the house for you. And if these brothers don't go out in the street and work with those young people in the street, I want you to write me and tell me. Yes. 
Because your job yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. is not in here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. In here is preparation. Yes, All the students that don't have GEDs, bring them in. Yes, Get them a high school diploma. Yes, Battered women, bring them in. Yes, Teach them who they are, the value of who they are, and make the men learn how to respect them. This is what this house is about. Yes, sir. But the worst neighborhoods, we adopt them. That's right. That's right. Ask the preachers. Say, Reverend, you got any men in your congregation that want to help restore and save our young people? And there's some young men in these churches that want to be challenged. Join up together. And let's go after our people. <laughs> so, thank you for coming out. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Brother uh, Donald and Brother Akbar and the laborers of Mosque uh, 28. Thank you for all that you've done. This is just the beginning of your great work in the great city of St. Louis. Yes, sir. yes, dear brother. Yes, sir. As salam. Oh, no, sir, I, I don't. But let me say this, brother. Being in the nation since 64 is a badge of honor. But growing into the wisdom of God since 64 would make you by now a demonstrator of the power of God. Being in the nation doesn't mean that the nation is in you. Yes. Being in the nation means you put yourself in the right place to be taught, but the work is ours to do. Yes. And as I said on last Tuesday and other Tuesdays, this nation of Islam has been in existence for 80 years. Yes. And when you study us and the accomplishments that we made under the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the meager accomplishments that we have made since his departure, we realize that something is wrong in the nation. And what is wrong is the problem of labor. Those of us who are in leadership over our people in a military line structure that have impediments that are with every one of us as a people that if you leave us alone, we'll destroy our mosques, we'll destroy our churches, we'll destroy our organizations, and the enemy does not have to do anything we carry the enemy in ourselves, with ourselves, and we destroy our own organizations from within. So there's a sickness with us that has to be dealt with. And that's what I was talking about on that Tuesday. And if we are willing to take the medicine that will identify the problem in our thinking, and help straighten it out 
then we can take the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad to a new level yes, and we will see exponential progress. Yes, so you uh, give that uh, to uh, my son and he will give it to me. You have your address on it? Okay. Yes, sir. Well, I appreciate it. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Now, to all of you, we are all creatures of our life experience. Yes, sir. And our life experience can alter reality. <clears throat> you can look at something and see it improperly because of the condition of your own heart and mind and that's why the lessons teach us we must be clean internally and externally quick thinking fast moving right down to the modern times and if we know the science of how to clean the mind internally eat the proper foods internally, yes, then our minds will start speeding up and our actions will speed up with our thoughts. Yes, and before you know it, instead of crawling or walking, we'll be moving at a very fast pace. Yes, so I thank you all. I hope your time uh, has been well spent. Yes, How many of you are here today uh, for your first time and uh, never been before uh, to a mosque. Uh, may I see your hands? Thank you. Thank you. Can I ask you, those of you who are here for your first, second, or third time, how many of you believe that what you heard taught today, that it is the truth and is good for us as a people? May I see your hands? Thank you. Thank you. Well, I want you to know that this house is your house. Yes, sir. And you can come here at any time. We will never try to take you away from your faith. Only strengthen you in your faith that you will do what your faith requires of you. So don't be afraid to come here and bring reverence. Because he's a good man, but if he knows what we are teaching, he can go back to the church and fire that church up and make it just like this house. And we we'll all work together to save our people. Thank you for listening. May Allah bless you as I greet you in peace. Turning the meeting over to Brother Donald, who will dismiss you. But in the meantime, if you're in other rooms... Uh, I will just stop by all the rooms where you are just to greet you. So hold your place. And uh, I hope to see you again, inshallah, God willing, soon. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Brother Minister. Let's hear it for Brother Minister Farrakhan. Takbir. 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 Brothers and sisters, hold your place. We have the city of St. Louis uh, to present something. Uh, Gregory Carter, Alderman for this district that we're in, and Sam Moore. Two of them sponsored this. And Mike McMillan. How are you, sir? How are you, sir? It's a pleasure. Takbir! 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 Give it unto God who's the head of my life. I am a Christian minister, but I am also, I wear this bow tie and they always say I'm Salama Jesus. So. <laughs>
So I am a, definitely a friend of Islam. We are here to present and to welcome the minister and you to the city of St. Louis. This is a great occasion. We're building coalitions. And this is a coalition that we're building because we have Alderman Gregory Carter here, who is the alderman for this particular ward. We want to set an example. So when you get through here and we get so large that we have to build somewhere else, I got plenty of land in the fourth ward where all the African-American history is. We're going to build a very magnificent place because God is in all of us. And we want to present this. We want uh, Alderman Gregory Carter, who is the alderman for this ward, and it is amazing to have us out here because we want to be a part of this new movement on saving our people. God bless you. Salam alaikum. Good afternoon, everyone. Good Welcome afternoon. to the community, the 27th Ward, the minister. I'm uh, just elated to see you again. Indeed. The last time we met, we were at your home. It was a small group of us. Yes, you may sir. not remember. Yes, sir. You do remember. Yes, sir. Well, on behalf of the city, we are elated to have you in the city of St. Louis and this community. And if you guys just take time, I want to read this to the minister. Yeah. Whereas community development is the critical part for the revitalization of the city of St. Louis, and whereas the Honorable Minister Farrakhan is a torchlight for black America throughout the world, he has dedicated his life to the upliftment, upliftment of our people and humanity and is known throughout the world as a spiritual leader under the guiding light of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. And whereas the honor, honorable Minister Farrakhan was in a national convener of the Million Man March, St. Louis being one of the largest constituencies, and whereas the city of St. Louis were one of the first cities to establish a mosque in the rebuilding of the Nation of Islam, it is for this reason the city of St. Louis holds a very special place in the heart of the Honorable Minister Farrakhan. And whereas on May 3rd, 1981, the Minister Farrakhan dedicated Mosque Number 28B in East St. Louis. Now, 29 years later on this day, the 23rd of May, 2010, the Honorable Minister Farrakhan is officially dedicating Mosque Number 28 in St. Louis, Missouri. Now, therefore, it be resolved by the Board of Aldermen of the city of St. Louis. We pause in our deliberations to recognize Muhammad Mosque number 28, and we direct the clerk of the board to spread a copy of this resolution across the minutes of these proceedings and to further prepare a commemorative copy to the end that it may be presented to our honoree at a time and place deemed necessary by the sponsor, myself, Indeed. and all the caucus members of the board of aldermen. Indeed. So, Minister, thank you. Thank you I think, I think I can speak on behalf of Brother Student Minister Donald and Brother Student Minister Akbar Muhammad and all of the believers that we are greatly honored by this and we want a partnership with this city in helping to restore the life of this community and our people, and we will be their partner in this noble effort. Yes, sir. Thank you, brothers. Thank, Thank you. you very much. And I will send you a letter. If the brothers are not dedicated to this event, I will call you. <laughs> this resolution is a etched in stone. So when you Google the, the uh, Nation of Islam or Minister Farrakhan, that proclamation right there is forever. It is your etched in stone now in the history of the city of St. Louis. God bless you. Thank you. With the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful, I bear witness there is no God but Allah, and I bear witness that Muhammad is his servant and his messenger. I greet you today in the greetings of peace, the greetings of assalamu alaikum. My name is Brother Melvin Shaheed, and I am a prostate cancer survivor, a prostate cancer advocate. All praises is due to Allah. I am the CEO and the founder of the Empowerment Network for Prostate Cancer Survivors here in the city of St. Louis. I've also been uh, I am the new facilitator over the American Cancer Society Man-to-Man -Man Support Group Program for the City of St. Louis. 
to our leader, the most honorable, Minister Louis Farrakhan, who has been a champion, mm -hmm. a torchbearer yes, for prostate cancer awareness, not only here in the city of St. Louis, but throughout our nation. I'd like to give him a picture of, 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 of our national award presentation, the Empowerment Network, which is a group of prostate cancer survivors, just received its first national award. We received the Harold P. Friedman Award. Our support group is recognized as the largest support group in the state of Missouri and possibly in the nation. To, our, to my leader and to my teacher, the most honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, I'd like to give you this picture. Thank you. Well, you know, I too, by the grace of Allah, am a survivor yes, sir. of prostate and colon cancer. <laughs> and we want to encourage all our men to take the examination to test for it because if we catch it early, we can defeat it. So don't be afraid of the test that might show that we have it. And don't despair if you find that you do, because if we catch it early enough, you too will be a part of this picture That's right. <laughs> as a cancer survivor. Yes, and to our dear sisters who are suffering as well with breast cancer, cervical cancer, and other forms of cancer, you have to clean up the way you eat and above all the way you think and know that you have the power with the help of God to overcome it. But let's catch it early so we have a better chance because cancer is destroying our people here in St. Louis and Chicago, all over the United States. And we have to fight back because this is part of the enemy's way of destroying an entire people without firing a shot. Thank you so much. Brothers and sisters, could you please hold your seat while Minister Farrakhan exits? Thank you, brother. He wants a photo up. Where's my brother? Come on. Come on, Sahib. Come on, Congressman. I need Councilman. Brother Akbar, where are you? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to go in. Brother Talib, make sure that Dr. Siddiqui sees the minister. Bro Brother uh, Joshua, Dr. Siddiqui right there, okay, to the left. Okay. And our brothers and sisters who Anthony Shaheed spoke to about their meeting with the minister, just hold your position. At this time, I'm going to turn the meeting. I, I didn't mention Todd Eel. Is Todd Eel here? He was. He was here earlier. Okay. Uh, Dr. Larry Muhammad from the University of Islam, please stand. The, the, this is our doctor who's over the universities of Islam across the country. Also, I want to mention uh, Yasin Muhammad. Is he still here? He left. Oh, there he is. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad's son. Yasin, please wave your hand over there, looking exactly like his daddy. And uh, the Dr. Blunt, I hope they didn't send Dr. Blunt downstairs, a longtime supporter of the nation. If Dr. Blunt is in the house, we welcome you and thank you very much for coming. Now, at this time, I'm going to turn the mic back to the hands of Brother Minister Donald, who's going to close out the meeting with a prayer. We want to thank you very much. We're going to wait a minute or two because the minister is going to the rooms. We don't want to start the prayer while he's walking through. So, Minister Donald, if you have something to say to thank the people, I know you do. But uh, let's give him a warm round of applause. I'm going to bring Brother Minister Donald to the right. Thank you, Brother. Thank you.
Thank you very much. Wasn't that awesome? Yes, Was it awesome? Yes, Did you enjoy yourself? Yes, oh, my goodness. What manner of man is this? Yes, yes. I mean, you know, I know he touched your soul deep down inside. So, brothers and sisters, what I would like to do at this point in time, I would like to just make the general announcements. And, uh, you know, I'm so full, I don't have nothing else to say. How can you say something after this? You know, that I want to make general announcements. And uh, also, first thing I want to do, thank you, sir. I want to let you know that you can get this message, DVD copy of this message, on high-speed duplicator right now. It is being developed, all right? So don't miss out on it, all right? All right, it's right outside, right outside of this door, outside of this door. Go outside, make a left turn, and just go pick it up. And you know, and we had an aftermath program as it relates to the uh, uh, proclamation, so they had time to do several of them, okay? Not several, but uh, several hundred. So just be patient. All praise is due to Allah. Thank you, sir. Okay, I, I don't like to make announcements when you all don't. Uh, you know, tell me in advance, you know. Uh, I, I'm not going to read all of this, but Sister Hafiza Muhammad, okay, let's see. For all your nations of Islam wedding needs, okay, this is a commercial, right? <laughs> hey, you know, <laughs> they visit our website for information on black business that are our supporters and all your after wedding needs, all right? But you know, I want to say no, something. Well, you come here, come here, sis. <laughs> you know, I, I like for y'all you can do it better than me. Yes, sir. Thank Just take you, sir. a few moments. Assalamu alaikum, right. family. My name is Sister Hafiz. I'm visiting here from the South Haven Study Group of Mississippi. And uh, I came to announce that NOIWeddings.com, which is my private company, is hosting the second annual NOI Singles 40 Plus social event, July 30th. 31st and August 1st in Atlanta. So for all the believers who are 40 and up, who are looking to complete your faith and get married and do the right thing, <laughs> right here in the Nation of Islam, we have a wonderful three-day event for you in Atlanta, July 30th, 31st, and August 1st. And you can contact us by NYWeddings.com. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you so all much. Right. All right. All right. All praise is due to Allah. See, she can do it much better than me. Of course, uh, I won't be at that retreat, all right? <laughs> I've been married so long, I'm now henpecked. <laughs> yeah, my, my wife is right here on the front row, so, you know, but, you know, I will say I'm not really henpecked, I just got hen house ways. <laughs> All praise is due to Allah. Now, brothers and sisters, I want to just let you know about our meetings, okay? Okay, our meetings. Every Friday at 1, 8, 1 p.m., Juma Prayer, right here. So the community invited to come out to our prayer service and hear, hear from us with our a short sermon. If you're working, you can come out, and you can. We, we're not going to keep you no more than a half hour, no more than a half hour, because we know you come in, and you want to make your prayers, and you want to leave, okay? That's on a Friday. Friday evening, we have study group. Come, and we'll get around in a circle all over the building. We can handle all of y'all that's in this room, I know. So we'll, we will study the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad being presented by the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. We want to invite all of you back next Sunday, next Sunday at 10 a.m. Of course, if there's not a national web a cast, then yours truly here will be giving the, the lecture. Also, on a Wednesday, Evening, we also have a, a, a regular meeting at 8 p.m. Of course, yours truly will be giving the lecture, okay? And that brings us right back around to Friday, okay? And uh, I want to say for those who raised their hand and you said that you want to become part of this, how many of you raised your hand and you want to become part of this? We're going to ask that the secretary, I didn't see them pass out any cards, okay? Yes, all right? So raise your hand if you want to become a part of this and you want to help us in this awesome task. So you can... Put, Pass the cards downstairs where they are standing. The minister is on his way down there, and I see Bishop Willie Ellison is with us today. Come on up here, Bishop. You're going to help me close this meeting out with prayer. We really enjoyed to, to our banquet Friday evening. 
you were uh, an excellent host, even though we didn't get a chance to see you. I was, I was uh, hoping to see you Friday night. Uh, I want to thank Minister Ishmael, uh, uh, the National Assistant to the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, for delivering such an outstanding uh, uh, keynote, being out, such an outstanding uh, speaker at our banquet. It was awesome. It was a sellout. They had to put up extra tables, and the food was excellent. Uh, the new Northside Conference Center, and you are looking right now at Bishop Willie Ellison of the pastor of New Northside Church. Come on up, Bishop. Thank you so much. And, uh, you know, we're about to close out, brothers and sisters. We just can't keep you like this after a message like that. We want you to leave just like the minister say, and let's come here for the motivation and the spirituality, but we go back out for service. Can we do that? Yes, sir. Thank you so much for coming. God bless you, and I hope this is not the last time that we see you, all right? All praises is due to Allah. So now I want to thank the Alderman Gregory Carter. We're going to be working very close with him. All pro been knowing him for years. As a matter of fact, I was in this neighborhood for 29 years. All right, we've been knowing each other ever since he became the Alderman. I knew his mom, and I knew Mike McMillan. We all kind of like grew up together in this city, all right? So I want to thank you. I want to thank all of you for coming out today. May Almighty God continue to bless you. So what I want to do right now, uh, uh, we want to close out with prayer, and I, we want to ask uh, uh, Reverend Ellison, Bishop Ellison, to close us out with prayer. Uh, the Christian prayer, and I'll come back with the Muslim prayer. How about that? If you could just make, you can make a remark, Bishop, please. Thank you so much. Minister, we certainly want to thank you for coming and sharing with us at New Northside Conference Center. Um, you had a great time. I, I wanted to get there before you left, but I couldn't. But I'm telling you, it's in the 26th Ward. That's, that's, uh, that's, I had to give a little accurate, 27 water, I mean. That's, that's, that's our alderman over there, yes. Alderman Carter. And then I want to thank you all for this area here. I had to come over here. I got out of church in time just to be a part of this worship. You got a great man here, and uh, Muhammad Donna. <laughs> such a beautiful host, and then the, the minister of Farrakhan, I have all the admiration for him and the work. I, I believe that things are going to happen in St. Louis behind this visit that's going to curtail some of the killings and the shootings and the murders and the crimes that's in this community. And I trust that you will stand together as one, that we might fight the enemy. All right. Thank God you, Bishop. You. Thank you. You, can, you want to close out? All right. Could you all stand, please? Yes. I'll come behind you with another. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you for this occasion, and we thank you for Minister Farrakhan. Give him strength. Give him deliverance and touch his body that he may be able to continue to the, the, do the work that he is doing. And then thank God for all of you Muslims in this community that we might bind together with the ministers of all faiths and come together that we might rid ourselves of the enemy. These blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. In the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful, all praise belong to Allah, Lord of the world, the beneficent, the merciful, master of this dead judgment which we now live. The alone we serve, thine aid we seek. Show us the straight path, the path of those whom thou hast bestowed favor, not the path of those whom wrath has brought down, nor of those who go astray after they have heard thy teaching. I mean. Amen.